Welcome back. Rating agency Fitch yesterday reaffirmed India's rating at uh, triple B minus with a stable outlook. This is India's long-term foreign currency issuer default rating. Joining me now is Mr. Jeremy Zook, the director of Asia Pacific Sovereign Ratings at Fitch. Uh, Jeremy, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, Hi, thank I'm you for having me. Uh, yeah, I want to start with a complaint that many Indians often have. This is a foreign currency issuer rating. Now, India has a record of never defaulting in its global debt. Uh, the uh, uh, current account uh, position, as you yourself have pointed out, the fear was it would be a deficit of 3.3% of GDP last year. It actually came in at uh, you know 2.2% by your own estimate. And the current year, it's probably going to be even less than the 1.9% that you forecast. If the country is so comfortable in terms of its deficit, which is pretty small, and the foreign exchange reserves are good to service 11, what, seven months of imports, then why not give at least a positive outlook? Uh, there is no doubt about India's ability to service external debt. Yeah. Um so that's a, a very good question. Uh, so typically in our methodology, we, we equalize our, our foreign currency and local currency uh, sovereign ratings. And, and that's the case for most investment grade sovereigns. So in the case of India, uh, you know, that, that, is, uh, that, that holds as well. Now, in terms of the external finances, we do view those as a, a relative rating strength in the case of India's credit profile. So as you mentioned, uh, India has just a modest current account deficit at this point. Um, foreign exchange reserves are still relatively high and uh, in our view, quite ample to manage external volatility and external debt, uh, both from a, a public perspective and, and a private perspective as well is relatively low. Uh, that being said, you know, we've kept India, uh, we've maintained a view that India does have um, external strengths uh, for, for quite some time. And that was the case even last year when we did see a worsening of the current account position and a deterioration in foreign exchange reserves. In fact, last June, we stabilized the outlook on India's rating. We had a negative outlook previously. We stabilized the outlook despite some of these external pressures. So what we've seen with the recent improvement in, in uh, external finances is really just a return to where we view India India's position more structurally, and, and that's consistent, we, we believe, with the current rating level. Okay. Well, I remember that you uh, had brought it to stable even in the face of uh, uh, slightly falling reserves and uh, rising current account deficit, which is why I would have expected a positive outlook in the very least. Uh, I'm not even going up to a rating upgrade. The uh, fact that uh, the foreign exchange reserves and the current account, the external position in general is so much more comfortable, doesn't it merit at least a positive outlook? I mean, crude prices are falling to add to the argument. Yeah, no, it, it's certainly a, a more comfortable position. Uh, I think the, the view is that you know, this is a return again to where we saw our forecasts more structurally. So we always anticipated that the, the deterioration in the current account last year uh, was temporary and, and the fall in reserves was temporary as okay. well. So in our in our forecast, we had already built in uh, an, an improvement and that improvement is happening faster than we expected, uh, but it's still in line with our, our forecasts more structurally. Okay, well, let me come to the local currency position and the fiscal deficit. Uh, the point is well taken that uh, the uh, general government deficit at eight and a half percent uh, is a spot of bother and compares uh, badly with other median uh, uh, triple B minus countries, which are at 3.6. But India's debt is owed to Indians. And, uh, you know, the government always has the option of printing money. It doesn't need to because the rate of growth, the nominal rate of growth is uh, about 11 percent by your own reckoning. So if the growth is 11 percent, uh, there is enough elbow room to service that debt. So would you really, of course, fiscal deficit aside, but is it a worry at all? Well, from our, our perspective, ratings are, are both a, an absolute view of a credit profile, but also a relative view of a credit profile. So we compare India, as you say, to other countries, to, to peers uh, in particular. And uh, when we look at the, the public finance metrics, the, the fiscal deficit is about double the, the peer median. 
Uh, and the debt ratio is in the low 80% compared to mid 50s uh, for the for the pure median again. Uh, so we, we do view those as as relative weaknesses for India's credit profile. Now, you know, the, the fact that this is all owned domestically certainly is a, a, a mitigant to some of the risks around high debt, uh, but it doesn't eliminate some of some of those potential risks. So I think, you know, two key factors to, to point out here is, is certainly, you know, under a, a baseline, under our baseline where, uh, you know, growth remains relatively robust, uh, th this maybe isn't such a, an, an issue. But if we were to see, you know, downside risks materialize, then uh, those risks are, are much greater, we believe, in, in the case of India. So it, it could lead to, uh, for instance, potential uh, crowding out in, in the domestic market um, if uh, the government requires higher levels of, of financing uh, under constrained credit conditions, which is not what we're seeing right now. Um, that could lead to uh, you know, some, some pressures on private sector's ability to, to borrow in the economy as well. And another thing to, to take into consideration is that when we look at interest payments as a share of revenues, India, uh, India's ratio is quite high. So about a quarter of all of India's revenues go simply to servicing uh, the, the debt. Um, and, and that could lead in, in, again, a downside scenario to some pressures. Uh, of course, the monetary authorities could step in um, with support in a severe downside case, but that in itself would, would lead to other macro imbalances uh, emerging. And, and so that's why you know, we are still a bit, a bit concerned about these higher levels of, of debt in that, India. That point is well taken, that it is a high fiscal deficit. Uh, it's just that serviceability is, uh, is also there. Uh, and I, ta I take your point that not 25, but 27 percent of the revenues are going uh, to service uh, interest payments. OK, you brought the point about growth. If growth is good, it can be serviced easily. Uh, your growth forecast is uh, 6 percent for the current year. The Reserve Bank is standing at six and a half. Uh, and I was wondering if the Reserve Bank may have a point going by the recent PMI readings, which are at 13 year highs, you know, 61.6 for services and uh, sorry, 61.6 for the composite and 62 for services PMI. That's, you know, that gives the feeling that uh, maybe the Reserve Bank is right after. Is there an upside risk at least to your number? So our, our current baseline and, and these forecasts were put out in, in mid-March. Um, is that uh, growth will slow in India this year from our, our estimate of 7% in FY23 to 6% in FY24. So driving that is is the fact that you know pent up demand uh, on the consumption side is is likely to fade over the next year, uh, and and that will uh, weigh on on the growth outlook in addition to more sluggish exports because of of slow global growth, um, and and investment we we think will be somewhat constrained because of the the high uh, interest rates and and the rise in interest rates that we've seen over the past year. Uh, that being said, you know I do think the risks around uh, our growth forecast are are relatively balanced at at this point. And on the upside, of course, that resilience in the high frequency indicators is is quite, uh, you know, a, a, a supporting factor for higher growth. We could see the government's capex drive, um, you know, help to crowd in private sector investment a little more quickly than we anticipate as well. But on the downside, it's still a very uncertain global environment at the moment. Um, rising interest rates by by the Fed and, and potential financial instability uh, are you know are, are are risks that that continue to loom in the global context. And and so I think in that sense, um, risks are are somewhat balanced. Oh, yes, uh, the global headwinds is a big factor. Uh, take your point on that. Uh, can you tell us what? Uh, uh, you guys at Fitch, your team at Fitch is factoring in in terms of a U.S. recession or a global recession and even Fed rates when you arrive at these growth numbers. Are you expecting, uh, you know, a three quarters, uh, two quarters? How many quarters of recession are you uh, penciling in? Yeah, so we have global growth slowing relatively uh, dramatically this year, and that's led by slowdowns in both the U.S. and, and Europe, um, offset by a rebound in China and, uh, you know, some quite some economic resilience in, in the Asia Pacific, um, especially in, in India. Uh, in terms of the U.S. forecast, we do uh, forecast a modest re recession in the U.S. during the middle of this year. Uh, 
Um, so far, the U.S. economy, like many economies, has, has been very resilient in the face of rising interest rates. But we do think that just the pace and, and magnitude of interest rate increases will start to, to bite at some point and, and drive a modest recession in the U.S. Uh, in terms of the annual growth, we still see positive growth um, for for the for 2023, uh, but certainly much lower, and that's building in that um, recession in in the middle of this year. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to squeeze in very quickly. Your inflation forecast is at 5.8 for the current year. RBI's is at 5.2, and the way in which crude prices have been falling, and even generally commodities. Uh, do you think that you may have to lower yours? There, there is some, uh, I suppose, uh, yeah, there, there is a growing prob probability that um, inflation is lower than what we expect. Uh, if we look at the recent um, inflation numbers, headline is now back within in the target band. And I think more importantly, core inflation, it, it seems, is coming off of, its, um, off of its persistent highs. So that's certainly a positive sign going forward. We do have inflation gradually coming down over the year, um, and and that could happen a little faster than what we anticipate. Okay. So there is some uh, downside to that. All right. And now, finally, what would make you put India into positive outlook and eventually rating upgrade, but first positive outlook? I think, again, this comes back to uh, public finances. And we uh, published our, our rating sensitivities in our report. And these really center around what happens with uh, public finances, public debt, and that interest to, to revenue ratio as well. So certainly, if we see those metrics improve um, heading towards, uh, but uh, you know, not at, of course, the, the triple B median, um, but just a, a more general improvement in some of those public finance metrics. That would be the biggest supporting factor uh, for potential um, positive action. Uh, and somewhat related to that is if we do see, uh, you know, India's growth rate, we, ex we, we assume nominal growth of around 10.5%. If we see that growth rate rise uh, further due to, say, uh, economic reforms or uh, momentum in, in terms of the China plus one strategy, uh, I think that could also lead to some uh, upward pressure on the rating. Jeremy, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for joining us uh, with your justification of the triple B minus stable outlook for India. Thank you for having me. Well, that's it on this edition of It's the Economy. Uh, it's uh, We have to call it today on Bazaar. Chartbusters coming up next.